Hey guys, Metal Gaze ZT, aka Little Deuce Bigelow, back here to take a look at another holster. So today we are going to be taking a look at the Epic Holster or Epoch by Blackhawk. It is a light bearing holster. It is not obviously optics compatible, as you can see. It does have a closed off section over the butt plate of the gun uh, that would preclude you from mounting optics, but it does give you a chance to mount a pretty hefty light on there. And it is a level 3 duty holster. Now, one of the big differences between this and some of other Blackhawk's other offerings are you have a level 3 retention system that is strictly thumb activated. Now, in the past, Blackhawk has had the surface system, uh, which typically has a paddle located right around here. And that will allow you to go ahead and unlock the gun. And the level 3 holsters will have a secondary button in the back that will unlock uh, the cover like this. However, you are still having to put your finger near the trigger guard uh, with most of Blackhawk's other offerings. With the Epoch, it is one button that releases both levels of retention. Of course, the third level of retention is the holster body itself, and that gives it a little bit of extra grab um, to keep the pistol in there. Not too much, as you'll see. So this uses just that thumb button. There's no index finger button, as you'd see on the other Blackhawk offerings. And this may make it appealing to people that don't want to go ahead and use something like that because of the inherent risk of having your finger next to the trigger guard while you're trying to pull a gun out under stress. That's been debated and we're not going to talk about it here, but this is, I believe, a much safer system than some of the other things that Blackhawk has used in the past. So that button is this right here. And when you press it in a little bit, it'll release that hood. Now, if I release the button and try to pull the gun out, it won't come out. You have to continue to apply pressure to the button. Then you can go ahead and remove the gun. Now it does automatically lock, just like the ALS system on a Serpa, and that stops the gun from being removed um, without finishing the button press cycle. To fold the hood back up, you cannot actually push it over um, without hitting the button again. Now that was designed so that um, if you're an officer that you don't get locked out of your holster if you're trying to reholster your gun. So what I'm talking about is essentially having this type of configuration. When you go to reholster, well, you can't do it. You have to make sure that hood is popped open. Um, if they have something that stops it from being closed, if you're rolling around with somebody on the ground or somebody goes to get your gun or whatever after it's been um, attempted to be reholstered, you still have your... Uh, two levels of retention, the holster body, and then the automatic locking. But you still have to go ahead and manually close this. So I like the feature. It's just like using a Safari Land hood um, where you're having to rock that back up for the SLS, the self locking system. Um, so just going to show you what we're talking about there. After you holster up, you're going to have to go ahead and throw that hood back on manually. It doesn't go back manually. You still have an automatic locking system. Just like the black one. So you hear the automatic locking system engage. Can't pull the gun out. Have to go ahead, pop that hood up manually. Same thing with this. Go ahead, get the automatic locking system. Go ahead, pop that hood up manually. And all you have to do is just take your thumb, place it on there, and rotate the hood back over. Now, it does come in black, black, and also black. Uh, mine, of course, are painted because I'm an absolute G and legend of the spray can. So there's no worries there. Typically, they come in a black and smooth finish. The only one I could find at this price point was one with basket weave, which I hate. Uh, basket weave is sort of the bait of me. But it is what it is. Um, it's one of those things that, I mean, the price was, I think it's like 40 bucks for this holster. I think new, they're like 120 something like that. So definitely got a good deal on it, even if it was basket weave. Now, there is a tensioning screw up front, um, which I originally, um, when I got it, they did not have installed, and I don't really care. Uh, it doesn't add that much tension to go ahead and clamp this down. Um, all your tension is pretty much going to be the active retention and then the hood. There's not too much body tension on here. When I first got it, however, the rails that are inside, I mean, you can see those. Let's take a look here. Those rails in there. We're a really tight fit. So I had to actually sand them down a little bit to allow the 
but I haven't decided it out easily, which was kind of a bummer, but once I got it all squared away, it was very, very nice. Now, I'm using a rather large light on this gun right now. It is the Nightcore MPL30, and so it is a very bulky, it is a two cell light, very, very wide. When I go ahead and put the gun in here, there's a little bit of rattle, not a whole lot. However, if I put a smaller light on here, you're gonna have a lot more rattle. For example, this is the Enforce APL. So it's going to be similarly sized to the new Enforce Wild 1 um, or Wild 2 and you know, obviously a lot bigger than the APLC. We'll go ahead and holster that up, put the hood down, you can see there's a ton more rattle. Now I mean if you look at the myself, I mean there is a lot of wiggle room in there. Now uh, it does come with these included spacers and they actually fit right down in here. It's very hard to see, but they fit in here, and what they look like is this. And so it slide in like that. And they have one spacer that's just flat, one spacer that's a little bit concave for running a light with a large like front uh, bezel, and a larger spacer, and this goes in when you are not using a light on the gun at all. So, they do give you the option to be able to run it without having to necessarily run a light on your gun, which is very, very nice. Um, I don't like the fact that it does, with my preferred light, I'd rather use the uh, Nightcore, or the, um, sorry, the Enforce, because I like the switches better, and I like the, um, the hotspot better. It does suck that there's that kind of wobble in there. Um, it's not really noticeable when you're walking around with it, unless it's on like a drop leg or something, but there's definitely that. But it will not come out, um, and you can't like walk it out either. And then it still does auto lock, so it's still not coming out that way. So it is still retained just as sturdily as it would be with the other um, the other light on there. It's just going to have more rattle to it. The final thing that we did here is went ahead and installed a QLS fork on the back of it, and there are companies that make an adapter plate that will allow you to go ahead and modify the um, holster to accept a QLS fork. Now, uh, there are a lot of companies that make this. Um, if you want to check out Evolve 3D Printing, they did make one for me on that. Um, it's kind of one-off, but they're my homies, so I've got to shout them out. And that will allow you to go ahead and attach that to whatever Safari Land gear that you choose. In this case, uh, just one of their uh, mid-ride UBLs. So, nothing bad there. Go ahead and throw that gun back in there. And this is the setup as it would typically be on my belt. Now, a couple of pros and cons. Um, it's huge. It's really, really big compared to um, the Safari Land. So you can see there, much, much bigger, much wider. Um, it does have a fully sealed bottom, quote unquote, kind of, kind of similar to the um, 7000 series of the Safari Lands. Now, you do have a hole here um, where your barrel is going to be, and there you go. Um, so you do have that um, to let out some like chunks of you know rock or debris or whatever else. Um, but it's not the same as having a fully opened holster bottom. So it will let water pass through things like that. Um, if you want a fully open bottom, I imagine you can just probably dremel off the front um, and get rid of that where the, the light is. I would recommend it, but you can do it. Um, second of all, the release button here is not super protected. So it's kind of hard to see with the QLS fork there, but the release button is right here. And it does release that ejection port lock, just like a Safari Land has. Um, and then you can see that there's these little hooks right here and they will latch onto the back and release when you push that down. So it's not super protected. You do have um, a wing out front that kind of stops frontal grabs and it is very difficult to actuate if you're not um, the person who's actually wearing it. Like if I'm coming down to try to grab it, like it is kind of difficult to get in there, uh, but you can. Um, so it is not as secure as like a Safari Land that has the little hood here and that covers up 
you, the release mechanism for your ALS and your SLS. So if you are wearing it, be aware that it is easier to go uh, and have to deal with weapon takeaways, um, or it is easier for somebody to take your weapon away, uh, especially if you're coming from behind because there's nothing really shielding it from behind. And in this case, you only have one mechanism that defeats all the levels of retention to get the gun out, where this, you do have to go ahead and grip it, rip it, flip it, suck, all that stuff. So, what do I think about this? Uh, I do think it's a good holster. I think that if you can find them, if you find them on eBay, you can get them for like 40 to $60. That's an insanely good deal. I saw one the other day for 20 and was tempted to snatch it up just because I want all the things. Um, but since I already got one, um, I might as well just stick to this one. Uh, they do make them for different calibers and I think different firearms. Of course, this is made for a Glock. And that's really all I carry and use besides like a Canic, which it does not fit, unfortunately. But if you have any questions, definitely let me know. Uh, I do like this holster quite a bit, especially now that I've got the spacers. When I got it, it did not have a spacer. Um, it did let me run it effectively with very little rattle, but I had to use the large light. Uh, if I used the smaller light, it would go ahead and release the gun, and you could actually just pull it right out um, as if it was also like running with no light. So there's a lot of room in there, which is why they put those spacer kits uh, in there. I did contact Blackhawk, though, by the way, and I asked them for a spacer kit since I did buy this used and I did not get the spacer kit. I thought there was just two of them, but there were three of them. One, of course, is in the holster and the other two um, are separate outside the holster. Just one tiny little screw. We'll go ahead and secure that into the, the holster. Um, and I emailed Blackhawk originally and didn't get a response. And then I went ahead and used the messaging system that they have. And um, it's on their website. And within like an hour, a guy named Gary got a hold of me and he was cool and sent me out in a completely new set of spacers free of charge and we're good to go rock and roll on that so if you have one or if you are looking to get one i definitely recommend it i think it's a pretty cool holster uh it's not like anything else blackhawk's done uh, except for the new t-series holster and i think this is sort of a a bridge between the servo and the t-series um so being an all thumb brake system so I definitely would recommend you go ahead and get one, check it out, see what you think. But uh, buy it on eBay because it's super, super cheap. Uh, if you can find them in the right spot for the right price, that's all I got for you guys. Have a great rest of your day. I'll talk to you soon. See ya.